another shorter little episode of Federico Talks Watches. I gave a piece of watch advice uh, to a friend of mine today. Somebody called me in and wanted to know what they should do. And I know I gave him good advice because, I mean, that's what I would do, but it, it's not, but they could have gone both ways, is my point. And I wanted to ask you guys if you would have done the same thing or advised him to do the same thing. And this is about a one watch collection. He said, Federico, I'm only ever going to buy one watch, and this is it. Should I buy this watch or that watch? And before we get into that, and I tell you what watches are and, you know, my train of thought, and then I, more importantly, I want to know what you guys think, we have to do the customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing a watch I don't wear that often, but one that I should wear more. That is my vintage Atlantic Worldmaster with that creamy patina dial and the ridiculous NATO strap, which I still haven't replaced yet. But hey, man, it's all good. Kind of goes well with the shirt, too. A little darker. Eh, whatever. And also, I wanted to let you guys know that I just got a couple of very interesting watches at stock at Delray Watch Supply, DelrayWatch.com. I got a very, very rare um, Breitling Avenger Seawolf with the yellow dial. That is the one that is most in demand. I got in the white Milgauss, unworn, and that is recently discontinued. And of course, I want to point your guys' attention to the Grand Seiko Automatic High Beat I have in the hot deals section of the website. I just uh, put that on sale, so if you're a Grand Seiko fan, you should go check it out. DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. So, as I was saying, I get a call, and they say, Federico, I'm only going to ever wear one watch. I don't want a watch collection, I want one good watch. And the two watches that the gentleman was choosing from were very different, but also very similar. One was a 1655, I believe the nickname is the Great White, um, vintage sea dweller, I believe from the 70s. Beautiful watch, absolutely gorgeous. A vintage sports Rolex, eh, they go for about 16, 17,000. And the other watch was the 116600. I'm very bad with model numbers. It was the 40 millimeter ceramic sea dweller that was discontinued. Those have also shot up in price, probably going to be eleven dollars to $12,000. He was very clear that money was not an issue. You know, that both of these watches, even though there was a five dollars $6,000 difference, you know, that wasn't a consideration. But he did say, it's going to be my one good watch. I'm going to wear it every day. He said, and I'm, you know, I have an active lifestyle. Not like he's a boxer or an MMA fighter or anything, but, you know, he goes swimming, uh, he goes hiking, he goes to the gym, and he doesn't want to worry too much about his watch. He also wanted to make sure that even though he would probably never sell his watch, that he wanted to make sure he was getting a good watch, a prestigious watch, a watch that is going to either go up or maintain value. And he wanted to know, which one should I go with? And it's a really tough choice, and I'll, and I'll tell you what I think. In my opinion, uh, there's no question the 1655 is the cooler watch. I mean, uh, I love the older non-maxi cases. I love vintage Rolex, the, the creamy patina, the personality. There's not so many out there. And, you know, it's still a tough Watch, you know, it's still a sea dweller for Christ's sake. Now, the modern piece that's a really interesting one because it was quickly discontinued, it was the 40 millimeter case size. Um, while it's not going to go up as quickly or uh, maybe never reach the heights of the 1655, at least in our lifetime, it is a watch that is greatly sought after um, because of that size and the short, you know, two or three year production run. However, even though I think the 1655. 5.5 five is a much more interesting and a much cooler watch, taking into consideration that this gentleman is only going to wear one watch, I personally told him I thought the smarter choice was the modern piece. Guys, don't kill me, you know, but let me tell you why I think that. While this gentleman is an active lifestyle, and while the vintage piece is a sea dweller, and, uh, you know, with the changing of the gaskets, it could always be uh, still a pretty tough watch, it's still vintage. These watches were just not made to the same ruggedness as 
the modern sea dweller with the ceramic bezel, the special clasp, the solid bracelet, um, the 904L steel. So even though I would pick the 1655 personally, but that's because I've got a, a watch collection and I rotate, I think for an everyday, no worry watch, you just can't go vintage. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but, but personally, for my level of comfort, a vintage watch could never be my only watch if I did live an active lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying I do, obviously. You know, I'm not exactly windsurfing and uh, running marathons. But this gentleman did live a more active lifestyle, and I advised him to go with the modern Rolex. While not as cool, in my opinion, not as rare, definitely more up to task uh, for taking shocks, be it the new materials, the movements, uh, the fact that it was a sapphire crystal instead of plexi. But that's what I told him to do. And, and here's the thing. I know I'm not the biggest, you know, vintage watch guy out there. My boy Christian over at Theo and Harris... Huge vintage watch guy. I'm not as well versed, even though I, I do know uh, more than my fair share. I wanted to know, what would you guys do? Did I give him good advice? Did I give him bad advice? Would you still go with the 1655 if you led an active lifestyle and it was your only watch? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Guys, on that note, I want to thank you so much for sticking around for another shorter little episode of Federico Talks Watches. Please don't forget the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And of course, for all your watch needs, DelrayWatch.com, my website. Guys, thank you so much, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.